Hi, and welcome to Enyarix Store. This is the third section of our course. In this part, we'll be covering how to get started with Enyarix and the store. The content of this part is as follows. First off, we'll cover how to install and set up our store. Then we'll learn how to configure it and how to create our first reducer. And once we've come that far, we'll be showing the data from the store in a component. All right, so we're in the terminal. Uh, we have scaffolded our application. It's an Angular application, and we're looking to add the store library to this. As we're used to, we can do npm install to get whatever dependency that we need. So in this case, we do npm install of at ngrx slash store. So this will install the store part of ngrx. Okay, so at this point, NGRX store is installed, and now we can start configuring this inside of our Angular application. So we're going to turn back into uh, VS Code. All right, so we're inside of VS Code, we're looking at our Angular project, and we are about to add NGRX store. To do so, and set it up and configure it, we need to import a module called store module. And it resides under the NGRX store namespace. So at this point we got the store module, but we need to configure it. We do that by adding it to the imports and we call for root. So for root expects us to add an object. So this object is a key value pair of the state at hand and what reducer handles said state. For example, here we could have counter, counter reducer. But if you have another type of state, let's say products, we'd have a products reducer that would take care of that state. What I mean by taking care of a state is that it's able to uh, know how to apply a change to that state. Let me exemplify what that means. So let's first create the counter reducer like so. And as we remember about uh, reducers, it is a function that takes a state as the first parameter and the second parameter is some kind of action object. Now, we always set a default value on the state to make sure it has something to fall back on. Reducers also contain a switch case in where we expect the action type to be the action that we intend to carry out. So here we would say if action type is of type increment, then we should take our state and add a one to it. And if it's not that case, then we don't know what it is. So then we define something called the default case. And the default case is simply us saying we don't know what you're trying to do, but we're just going to give you the state back. All right, so let's do something similar, but for the products reducer, it is fairly similar. So we're just going to copy that and create a products reducer, but it, this is not an integer, but rather an array. So the default value for a products reducer is an empty array. And maybe we call this one add, and instead of doing a state plus one, we know that we have some kind of payload with us. Um, which means the first thing we're going to do is take our existing state, like so, we do an object spread or an array spread, and we take the action payload. So if that thing is an object, quite good to do this as well, to make sure that we copy the entire object in a safe way. And if it's not add, then it, we just return the state exactly the same way as we did the counter reducer. Now we have a couple of states here, we have a couple of reducer set up here. So now we're actually set up to show this data somehow. We don't have any data to show so far because, I mean, this is a default value of zero, but this, and this is an empty array. But we are going to attempt to show this inside of a component. So that's up next. Okay, let's try to show this data. As I said, we only have the default values. So if we haven't dispatched anything to our store, we're just going to have the default values within here to show. And there's not much point in show, trying to show an empty array. So we're going to attempt to show the counter value here. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go to the app component in HTML and try to show that. So how does one show something from the store? Well, here we can inject the store itself by doing this. So the store, of course, is a service at this point and it resides within your Rx namespace, like so. So at this point, the store expects us to give it some kind of type to function properly. So we're going to do that. So for now, we're going to give it a type of an interface that doesn't exist yet, but bear with me, it will. We will also 
separate a uh, observable. Remember that observables are always ending with this dollar sign. This is called Finnish notation for repetition. And this will be an observable of uh, some sort. So we're going to add that you are an observable. And we're going to say that you're an observable of type number, because that's what you are. And observable, of course, resides within the Rx namespace. Like so. Here we type observable from RxJS. And we simply do an assignment here where we say counter equals store. And now we're using a method called select. So select is the method that we use to get any type of state from the store. So in this case, we are using a string argument and the string argument needs to match these names. So counter and products would be valid names. So we're going to type counter. So calling select we get an observable back and this is why we have an observable here and uh, as we know about observables generally when we try to show them we need to show them by using an async pipe or we need to subscribe to them okay so i promise to explain what the app state is so the app state is simply an interface and you can see we have created it over here and it is simply a typed representation of what the state is so we're saying we know that there's a counter property, we know that there's a products property, and we are defining that it's of type number and of type array, respectively. This means that we get some tooling support when we try to actually perform a select, and it will tell us what's possible and what's not possible. Okay, so now we have defined that we will output the observable. We use the async pipe to make sure that the value within the observable is resolved. And now we can have a look in our browser to make sure that our little Endurex implementation works. Now we can see that value resolves to zero, which is the default value for the counter reducer. As you can see, we are able to read up the data from the store. So we've come to the summary of this part. We have learned how to install Endurex store. We have also learned how we can configure the store state by defining different uh, state properties and their corresponding reducer. Finally, we have learned how to show the data in a component by us injecting the store service and assigning whatever state we need to an observable and show that observable in the view using the async pipe.